A very good morning to all our viewers. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television with me, Smriti Rastogi. And first up, a quick look at the top headlines of the day. Manohar Parikar led government to face floor test in the Goa Assembly today. Siddharth Kunkolienka made pro tem speaker for proceedings. Amrinder Singh to take oath as Chief Minister of Punjab, Manmohan Singh and Rahul Gandhi among leaders to be present for the ceremony. Cabinet approves national health policy, proposes to give a short health services to all. Centre also approves additional 2% DNS allowance. Setback for Donald Trump, federal judge blocks US president's new travel ban hours before it was due to begin. And India take on Australia in the third and crucial test in Ranchi. Australia win toss and choose to bat first. Four match series tied one all. The newly sworn in BJP led government in Goa under Manohar Parikar faces a crucial floor test today. A special session of the assembly has been convened for the test that will take place at 11 am. Governor Mridula Sinha administered the oath to Siddharth Konkolienka as a pro tem speaker of the house on Wednesday. Parikar was sworn in as the chief minister of Goa for the fourth time along with nine ministers. He claimed support of 22 legislators and also that of the NCP's Churchill Amle Mao in the 40-member assembly. BJP had bagged 13 seats in the polls while it claimed support of three MLAs each of the Goa Forward Party and Maharashtrawadi Gomantak Party besides three independents. Congress had won 17 seats. The Supreme Court had ordered the floor test today while rejecting the Congress plea to stay the swearing in. I don't think there's any problem with anyone. It was actually indirectly proved, though the law requires it to be done on the floor of the assembly. Yesterday you were present for the swearing in ceremony. All 22 plus one who supports were there. Again, Congress went to governor in the afternoon around one or two o'clock where they only presented 17 people the number is very clear so i don't see any reason why there has to be any apprehension and amrinder singh will take oath as the new chief minister of punjab shortly at a ceremony in chandigarh former prime minister manmohan singh and congress vice president rahul gandhi will be attending the event Besides the two leaders, Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister Veer Bhadra Singh and National Conference leaders Farooq Abdullah and his son Omar Abdullah and former UP Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav will attend the swearing-in. Amrinder and members of the cabinet will be administered oath by Punjab Governor VP Singh Badnor at the Punjab Raj Bhavan. This is the second time Amrinder will become the Chief Minister of the state. Congress ended the SAD BJP combined's 10 year regime by registering a thumping win by bagging 77 seats, one shot of two third majority. Now to Manipur, where the BJP formed its first ever government in the state after N. Biren Singh took oath as the chief minister. A former Congress leader, Biren Singh promised to work together with allies for the development of the state. National People's Party leader Y. Joy Kumar Singh was sworn in as the Deputy Chief Minister who was once considered the right-hand man of the former Chief Minister Ipobi Singh. Ending 15 years of Congress rule, BJP's Nongtongbam Biren Singh was sworn in as Chief Minister of Manipur in Imphal. Vijay Kumar Singh of the National People's Party was sworn in as Deputy Chief Minister. Seven MLAs also took oath, including three MLAs from the NPP and one each from the BJP, the NPF and LJP and the Congress. Ahead of the swearing-in, Berin Singh assured that the party will work together with its allies. Feeling good, feeling good, feeling good. Is there any confrontation with the partners in terms of... No, 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 not at all, not at all. And you are confident that you will prove yeah, your majority yeah, yeah. on the floor of the House? Definitely, definitely, definitely. A national-level football player turned politician, 56-year-old Biren Singh left the Congress to join the BJP last year. Formerly a minister in the Ibobi Singh-led government, four-time MLA from Haingang Assembly constituency, Biren resigned from the party after revolting against Ibobi Singh. Yeah, we are happy that everything has worked out and we are happy and we are very confident that this will be a very strong and stable government and it will be a government that will work for the people of Manipur and change Manipur. 
Manipur has now become the third state after Assam and Arunachal Pradesh in the northeast to have a BJP government. Although the Congress emerged as the single largest party with 28 seats, it could not form the government after the regional parties NPP, NPF and LJP decided to go with the BJP. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV. Meanwhile, the opposition Congress on Wednesday accused the BJP of devaluing democracy in Goa and Manipur. The party claimed the governors of these states had acted in a partisan manner in the Rajya Sabha. Dismissing the objections, the government said the Congress failed to muster the numbers to form the government. The House saw several adjournments through the day as the Congress sought to corner the government on the issue. Here is a detailed report. The Congress targeted the government in the Rajya Sabha after the BJP cobbled up a majority in Goa and Manipur. Raising the issue during zero hour, Congress's deputy leader in the House, Anand Sharma, accused the BJP of violating the people's mandate in the two states. Leader of the opposition, Gulam Nabi Azad, cited rulings by the constitution benches of the Supreme Court to state that the governor was bound to invite the party with the largest numbers of MLAs to form the government. स्टेटस को इंटी मेंटेन करना चाहिए दोनों जगह चीफ मिनिस्टर को इस्तीफा देकर और जो गवर्नर्स हैं दोनों गोवा के और मणिपुर के उनको सरकारों को बर्खास्त करके वहां दोनों चीफ मिनिस्टरों को जो कांग्रेस का लेजिस्लेचर पार्टी का लीडर है गोवा का और मणिपुर का उन कांग्रेस के लेजिस्लेचर पार्टी लीडर उनको गवर्नर ने ओ दिलानी चाहिए और उन्हें समय देना चाहिए अपना बहुमत प्रूव करने के लिए सदन आई एम सॉरी टू से Mandate has been violated. Established law and constitutional position has been disrespected, and a party which has won a big state is stealing MLAs, stealing the mandate to cover together the government. It's a murder of democracy. CPM Sitaram Yachuri backed the stand of the Congress Party. The principle of the single majority, I mean, the largest party being called is a principle that is established. That has been violated. The House must note that this is something of a violation that has happened. Citing instances, leader of the House, Arun Jaitley, defended the governor's decisions in Manipur and Goa. Jabki Vaikalpik Gatbandan ke paas pasht bahumad ho, bahumad ke log Rajapal ke saamne pesh ho chuke ho, Rajapal ko likh ke de chuke ho, aur Rajapal ne joh nirne liya hai, uske upar kal pasht faisla ho jayega ki bahumad kis ke saath hai. लोकतंत्र का आधार है कि सरकार बहुमत की बने अल्पमत की नहीं और इसलिए अल्पमत को बुनाना इसकी कोई गुंजाइश लोकतंत्र के अंदर नहीं है जेटली एसोसिएशंस फेल टू क्वेल द प्रोटेस्ट एस कांग्रेस मेंबर्स एंटर द वेल एंड प्रोटेस्टेड अगेंस्ट द गवर्नमेंट जीरो आर वाज डिस्टर्बेड व्हाइल क्वेश्चन आर वाज वॉश्ड अवे इवन इन द पोस्ट लंच सेशन द प्रोटेस्ट रिमेन अनएबिटेड विद नो विजिबल रिस्पाइट द चेयर एडजर्न द हाउस टिल थर्सडे डिस्कशन Although the BJP finished second in both states, it was in an advantageous position to form government with the help of allies. With Kriti Mishra and Panchanan Mishra, Vishal Dahiya, Rajya Sabha TV, Delhi. On to some more developments, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal continued his tirade against EVNs on Wednesday too, alleging that machine tampering may have led to Aam Aadmi Party's poor showing in Punjab. Questioning the reliability of electronic voting machines, Kejriwal said at least 20% of Aam Aadmi Party's votes may have been transferred to the SAD BJP coalition. He wrote to the Delhi Chief Secretary on Tuesday, directing him to request the State Election Commission to hold the upcoming municipal polls in Delhi using ballot papers. Saying that the Aam Aadmi Party had strong prima facie evidence of the foul play, Kejriwal also demanded that votes registered in EVMs be compared with the VV Pat trail in around 32 places in Punjab where the paper audit system was in place. Meanwhile, BSP Chief Mayawati also attacked the BJP over the UP results and decided to vote move to court against the alleged tampering of the EVMs. She said that the BSP will observe a black day every month against the murder of democracy by the BJP. Election Commission ki jimmedari hai logon ka pure process pe aur machino ke upar vishwas bana rahe isko kayam karne ki. Yeh election commission ki jimmedari hai isko you can't brush it under the carpet. Dharna Pradeshan agle mahine 
11 अप्रैल को होगा इसके बाद फिर अगले महीने 11 मई को होगा ये क्रम चलता रहेगा इस प्रकार से ये आंदोलन उत्तर प्रदेश के हर जिला हेड क्वार्टर में हर महीने 11 तारीख को जहां लोकतंत्र की की गई हत्या के विरोध में इसे काला दिवस के रूप में धरना प्रदर्शन के जरिए प्रदर्शित किया जाएगा The Uttar Pradesh BJP Legislative Party is likely to meet in Lucknow today to decide on the chief ministerial candidate of the state days after the party's landslide victory. The Saffron Party is set to return to power in the state after a decade and a half. The party's central observers, Union Minister M Venkaiah Naidu and General Secretary Bhupendra Yadav would be present at the meeting. BJP President Amit Shah has been authorized to choose the next chief minister. The central observers would consult the MLAs and report to Shah, who will take the final decision. The names of the several probables, including Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh, MOS for Railways Manoj Sinha, Party's State Unit President Keshav Prasad Maurya, Party's National Vice President Dinesh Sharma, among others, have been doing the rounds. Meanwhile, the Samajwadi Party National President Akhilesh Yadav will also meet the newly elected SP legislators at the party office in Lucknow today. The discussions in the meeting are likely to focus on their new legislative party leader and future course of action. According to the Samajwadi Party, the party might also hold deliberations on the possible causes of defeat in the assembly polls. The SP Congress contested together in the assembly elections. The Samajwadi Party seats tally came down to 47 from 224 in 2012 while the congress managed to bag only 7 seats down from 28 seats held by them in 2012 and making a statement in lok sabha on wednesday external affairs minister sushma swaraj said that safety of indian diaspora in usa is the government's top priority Swaraj so said that her ministry is keeping a close watch on the incidents of racial attacks on Indians living abroad and has got assurance about their safety from the authorities there. Referring to the recent attacks on Srinivas Kuchibotla and Deep Rai, Swaraj said that she had spoken to their families and raised the matter with the highest authorities in US. Several MPs had sought a response from the government in the 0 hour on the 9th of March over the recent attacks on Indians abroad. विदेशों में बसे भारतीय डायस्पोरा की सुरक्षा तथा संरक्षा हमारी सरकार की सर्वोच्च प्राथमिकता है हम अमेरिकी सरकार के साथ लगातार बातचीत कर रहे हैं किसी भी आपातकालीन मुद्दे के समाधान के लिए हमारे दूतावास तथा कौंसुलावास स्थानीय भारतीय समुदाय के दलों के साथ निकट संपर्क बनाए हुए हैं मैं विश्वास दिलाती हूँ कि हम विदेशों में रहने वाले भारतीयों के जीवन को प्रभावित करने वाली किसी भी गतिविधि के प्रति सतर्क हैं और उनके हितों की रक्षा करने के लिए हर संभव कार्य करेंगे Welcome back. The government on Wednesday approved the national health policy which proposes to provide assured health services to all in the country. The union cabinet chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi gave its nod to the policy which has been pending for the last 2 years. Though the details of the national health policy have not been disclosed, Union Minister JP Nadda is likely to make a so moto statement in the parliament today elaborating its salient features. The draft policy had said that the government wants to ensure universal access to affordable and assured healthcare services and will explore the creation of a health cess to raise the required funds. The policy comes amid long-standing concerns that a vast portion of the households across the country remain unprotected from the healthcare expenses. The draft will also address the issue of maternal and infant mortality rate as well as making drugs and diagnostics available free at least in the public healthcare system in the country. The union cabinet has also approved an additional 2% DNS allowance from January 2017. The union cabinet chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi increased by 2% over the existing rate of 2% of the basic pay to compensate for price rise. The increase is in line with the recommendations of the 7th Central Pay Commission. 
the combined impact on the exchequer on account of both DNS allowance and DNS relief will be 5857.28 crore rupees per year and 6833.50 crore rupees the measure will benefit about 48.85 lakh central government employees and 55.51 lakh pensioners and in a fresh push to roll out the ambitious indirect tax reform the gst council headed by finance minister arun jaitley is expected to approve two crucial legislations at its meeting today the council is likely to approve the state gst and the union territory gst bills the council's nod will act as another decisive step in the run up to the implementation to the overhauled tax regime from 1st of july in its previous meetings the council had cleared final draft of three other bills integrated gst central gst and compensation bill the panel had also agreed to cap the levy at 40% while sticking to the earlier slabs of 5 12 18 and 28% Sources say that government is planning to get parliament's approval on the ongoing budget session, but before the, that, the states will have to give their nod to the bill. Meanwhile, India on Wednesday targeted Pakistan for abetting cross-border terrorism at the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, saying that the neighboring country is becoming the world's terrorism factory. Indian diplomat to the UNHRC in Geneva, Nabnita Chakrabarti said. Pakistan had alienated its own people through the continued mistreatment of its minorities. She also blamed Pakistan for destabilizing Jammu and Kashmir by promoting infiltration and cross-border terrorism. She also expressed concern over the rising sectarian conflict and economic hardship in the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir due to neighboring countries' occupation and discriminatory policies. Asserting that Jammu and Kashmir is an integral part of India, India on 9th March reiterated that Pakistan had illegally occupied parts of state and the situation there is an internal matter of the country. From, the, from becoming world's terrorism factory, Pakistan has also alienated its own people through continued mistreatment of Hindus, Christians, Shias, Ahmadiyas and other minorities. The Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir is part of a pluralistic and secular democracy where an independent judiciary, an active media and a vibrant civil society guarantee freedom. In contrast, Pakistan-occupied Kashmir is administered by a deep state and has become a hub for the global export of terror. And shifting our focus onto some international news, the U.S. has announced charges against two Russian intelligence officers and two hackers over a massive Yahoo data breach that affected at least 500 million user accounts in 2014. The U.S. says two members of the FSB, the Russian intelligence agency, conspired with criminal hackers. The hack allegedly targeted the email accounts of Russian journalists and opposition politicians, former government officials in neighboring countries and several U.S. government figures. The indictment comes amid intense political controversy over Russian interference in the U.S. elections. Though U.S. Department of Justice declined to comment on whether there was a link between the Yahoo hack and Russia's alleged attempt to sway the election in Donald Trump's favor. And we'll take you live to the oath-taking ceremony of Amrinder Singh, who is being sworn in as the new Chief Minister of Punjab in Chandigarh. Former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi are attending the event. Remember, Congress has won 77 seats in Punjab. This is the second time that Amrinder Singh uh, is taking oath as the Chief Minister of the state. Meanwhile, in a setback to the Donald Trump, a federal judge in Hawaii blocked U.S. President's new travel ban, hours before it was due to begin at midnight on Thursday. U.S. District Judge Derek Watson cited questionable evidence in the government's argument that the ban was a matter of national security. 
Lawyers argue that the ban would violate the U.S. Constitution by discriminating against people on the grounds of their national origin. The state also said that the ban would harm tourism and the ability to recruit foreign students and workers. The order would have placed a 90-day ban on people from six mainly Muslim nations and a 120-day ban on refugees. An earlier version of the order issued in late January was blocked by a judge in Seattle. Hawaii is one of the several U.S. states trying to stop the new ban. Judges in Maryland and the Washington state are also set to rule shortly. Meanwhile, Trump described the ruling as judicial overreach. We would love it if the, um, if the uh, federal government could, could make sure that they come out with an order uh, that protects our national security interests, keeps the people of Hawaii safe, keeps the people of Oregon uh, safe as well, uh, but just not in a way that discriminates against people uh, based upon their nation of origin or based upon their religion. A judge has just blocked our executive order on travel and refugees coming into our country from certain countries. The order he blocked was a watered-down version of the first order that was also blocked by another judge and should have never been blocked to start with. This new order was tailored to the dictates of the Ninth Circuit's, in my opinion, flawed ruling. This is, in the opinion of many, an unprecedented judicial overreach. Meanwhile, two suicide bombings hit the Syrian capital of Damascus on Wednesday, killing at least 30 people and wounding over 100. One suicide bomber detonated his explosive vest in the capital's main judicial building, while the second attacker detonated himself at a restaurant. So far, no group has claimed responsibility for the attacks. The attacks are latest in a spate of explosions and suicide attacks targeting government-control-led areas in Syria and its capital. On Saturday, at least 40 people were killed in attacks near religious sites in Damascus. Attackers also twice struck the government-held city of Homs in the past few weeks. Shashank Manohar on Wednesday resigned as ICC chairman after merely eight months in office, citing personal reasons. Manohar mailed his resignation letter to ICC CEO Dave Richardson without clarifying the exact reason for his sudden move. However, sources suggest that Manohar's decision to quit stems from the fact that the BCCI seems to have gained enough ground to block constitutional and financial reforms in ICC that would have come up for approval at its next board meeting. Any reform to be passed needs two-third majority and the BCCI is believed to have managed to get Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Zimbabwe on its side. Last year, the 59-year-old was elected as the body's first independent chairman on a two-year term in May after he resigned from the BCCI, citing his inability to carry out Lodha Committee reforms in Toto. The third test between India and Australia has begun in Ranchi with the visitors choosing to bat first after winning the toss. Pat Cummins and Glenn Maxwell have been included in the Australian side in place of pacemaker Mitchell Stark and all-rounder Mitchell Marsh, who were both ruled out due to injury. For India, opener Murli Vijay returned to side after recovering from a shoulder injury. The host had lost the first test at Pune by 333 yeah, runs, but bounced back in the second game in Bengaluru with a 75-run victory. The four-match series is tied at 1-1. Spotted the fielder, went for it. And that's all we have for you in this edition of Breakfast News. Keep watching Radhi Sabha TV.